My name is Victor Avila. I'm a Republican candidate for U.S. Congress District 23 in Texas. And the incumbent is Tony Gonzalez. He has betrayed the will of the people. He was elected based on the word that he said that he was going to do. One of those things is to secure the border. He was single handedly responsible for killing the border security bill that was presented earlier this year. They have deliberately opened the border to fundamentally change the fabric of our country. Before, we had a thing called enforcement, where we actually tried to stop them from entering our country. That doesn't exist now. What the people of, of this district want and these constituents want, they want safety. They want public safety and they want someone to actually represent them in Washington, D.C. And this is the difference with me. What you get with me is you get integrity. Hey guys, Michael Copon here from Power Rangers and a bunch of Hollywood movies, but I'm here for something more important, and that's our country, guys. Standing here with Victor Avila. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Victor, like, tell us what's going on here, and tell us, I want to know firsthand, what did, what did Trump do differently than what Biden's doing currently to stop what we, what we witnessed today with the legal immigrants coming through? Well, it's, it's, obviously it's night and day difference. It's upside down and backwards is the best way I could uh, give it to you. Under the Trump administration, we had the, the most, most secure border ever. And I tell you, because I worked here for 20 years, but uh, if you might notice a little bit, I'm, I'm a little agitated right now because that's, yeah. that's the emotions that run through me no, every no. time I stand here and I don't recognize our country. Yeah. I don't recognize the enforcement of our laws, our constitution, especially the protection of our sovereignty. And what we just witnessed right now was a group of about 35 illegals yeah. just walk in, walk into this country despite having the National Guard, despite having Texas DPS, the Border Patrol, and as a matter of fact, other states' agencies helping out. This is a violation of uh, so many laws here, and that's what this administration is doing, is violating our own laws deliberately, and no one's doing anything about it. And not to mention, I, I saw you were even trying to communicate with all the illegals, trying to find out. We found out some people from Ecuador uh, traveling for 70 days, some from Venezuela. Uh, but mention also, I like what you said about uh, they might be from that country and they're proud, but what makes that different here in America? Well, they're, bring, they're coming from broken countries. They're coming from socialist, communist countries. And the big difference that I personally have seen in the shift, even from the, the people that I arrested years ago, is that now they're coming with a different sense of entitlement and bringing their socialist and communist country to our country, to your hometown, and not assimilating to the United States. And the assimilation means following our constitution, following our laws and our rule of law, uh, that they're not used to doing in their country, but they don't want to change to ours. They want to have Venezuela here. They want to have Nicaragua here. As a matter of fact, they want to have Iran here and China and Africa because that's all the other countries are coming from as well. And that is a huge impact in your community. Yeah, I also heard too, a lot of times they just get a pass and a, and, and a, and a uh, court date for two years from now, and they, they don't even show up to that. Do you, can you explain more about the process, what happens after this? So these aliens, for example, that just came in, they're going under the bridge. Border Patrol will start an initial processing. They will drive them in the bus to the local facility that we built. Uh, they'll be there for a couple of days, two to three days, where they kind of get fed and, and, and set up to be transported, yes, by bus or airline, to their final destination on your dime and my dime. We're paying for this, ladies and gentlemen. We're paying for this transportation, and they're giving all these different type of processes. Mm -hmm. And it gets a little complicated. NTAs, notice to appear, a notice to appear on your own recognizance. A lot of people are then transferred over to Health and Human Services, if you're a family unit. Yeah. You're transferred to ORR, Office of Refugee and Resettlement. We send them over to these, these agencies, and these agencies release these people, especially unaccompanied children, to whoever asks for them. And we're talking about child trafficking, human trafficking, and of course the drugs, because while we're being entertained with all this, guess what the cartel behind us is doing? Bringing in the drugs and smuggling the people that don't want to come through this process into our country next to your uh, hometown. And, and I, I played a Border Patrol police officer uh, a few years ago in a film, and I've, I've got to talk to people down at the San Diego border. Mm -hmm. And uh, even there, I got to witness the tunnels that they sneak people through. And they're hiding, they're hiding drugs in people's bellies, and then they cut them up once they get to the American soil. This stuff really happens, guys. And it's happening not just in San Diego, it's happening here. And 
you know, Victor's trying to change that, guys, and we're just trying to make you guys aware of what is actually going on. And, and we also have soldiers that are actually trying to stop this process. I even heard him saying, sorry, you cannot come through, but yet they're not allowed to touch me. Let's talk more about that process, too, and what, wh why, why they're not allowed to do anything. They haven't been granted the authority, in this case, the National Guard, State Guard, by the governor. They have been assigned here, and they have been uh, deployed here, but not with the full authority behind it. And it's very frustrating to yeah. see that because yes, they're standing here, yes, they're armed, but they can actually put hands on the aliens. They cannot interact with them. Um, and so they're just here observing like you and I are. Yeah. And it's very frustrating to see that. There is a chance, an, op an opportunity for the state of Texas to change that. It just has not happened. But ultimately, it lies on the feet of Alejandro Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security, and the Biden administration. This is their jurisdiction. And this, they need to be held accountable yeah. for allowing what I believe 12 to 15 million illegal people in the last three years into this country. Think about that number. That's more than almost some con full states, yeah. states that have less population than the entire state that we have allowed here. And whether you like it or not, these human beings are somehow going to have to be absorbed yeah. into the community. Yeah. How? I don't know. They don't have jobs. They don't have uh, shelter. They don't have health care. Uh, there's language barriers, there's health issues. There's a big, big problems that, by the way, we have those problems as U.S. citizens. Yeah. But we're not putting our, our country first. We're putting people from all over the world first in front of us instead of our U.S. citizens, and I'm going to change that. Yes, and I think that's amazing, especially coming from a family that came from Cavite in Manila. My grandfather served in the naval uh, you know, forces, and, and my dad saw my grandfather maybe five times until he was 14 years old, and they legally came to America after he served our country and that and that's what we're trying to make known here is that there is a legal process due in this situation we gotta we gotta respect and honor that absolutely so thank you with, for i appreciate what you're it doing. thank you victor buddy. i just wanted to take some time to talk with you thank you thank you thank you appreciate thank you, you. Under this administration, they have deliberately opened the border to fundamentally change the fabric of our country. I'm Jared Craig with Legacy Pack. We are here at Eagle Pass, Texas to bring attention to the border crisis, to educate the voters, the citizens of the United States, and the candidates running for federal office, the importance of a secure border. And at Legacy Pack, we want to bring candidates here to the border to see it firsthand because there is nothing like being here seeing this. We saw women and children climbing over barbed wire. There is no reason why we cannot secure this border. There is no reason to keep this open. This is not humane. So, so we need to get Victor and all these other good America First candidates into office. We at Legacy Pack depend on your donation and support to support these projects. And we can't do it without you. So please go on to LegacyPack.org and show your support.